Suruchi Patel from Electrical Department, Parul University. I welcome you all in this webinar session, which is going to be conducted on uh, industrial automatic uh, automation and industrial applications, right? Automation and its industrial applications. The expert is uh, Nitesh Parmar, who is a senior project engineer in surveilling systems. He has a very deep experience of development, testing, commissioning, and industrial automation systems. And now he is going to share our, his knowledge with us. Uh, sir, you please may continue now. Good afternoon to all. Sir, uh, ma'am, I want to ask one thing. Yes, sir. Uh, which year uh, students are here? Sir, all the e-electrical students will be joining us, as well as the other students who other are interested, uh, interested, they may join to this live session. Okay, no problem. Yes. Hello all, uh, this is Mitesh, and as ma'am gave you uh, introduction about me, so I will directly start our today's uh, webinar based on industrial automation and its applications. Uh, it is visible, ma'am? Yes, sir. It is visible. You all. Okay. So, before going to start today's webinar, I want to introduce to uh, our organization uh, that is Surveilling Group. Basically, we have started our operations in the field of electrical and the automation since 1981. Our uh, major uh, sectors in the industry that are automation and the electrical sector. So in surveilling group, we are two companies having surveilling engineers private limited, which is in the field of electrical uh, working uh, in the battery chargers and UPS systems and surveilling engineer systems. Uh, surveilling systems limited is in the core field of industrial automation where we have different different business areas like consultancy design engineering manufacturing commissioning installation as well as industrial automation training today i welcome you all in the training division of surveilling systems limited surveyor automation center so that is a part of uh, surveilling systems and surveilling systems are the system recognitor or system integrator with the Rockwell, Rockwell automation. Basically, Rockwell automation that is a well-known brand from the USA for the automation solution products. Whatever the products or whatever devices or equipment that are used in the industrial automation, they are manufacturing all of the instruments. So we are connected with this uh, very one well-known brand since last 25 years in the field of this industrial automation. So let's, uh, we'll uh, have some introduction about industrial automation. Then I will uh, share you basic equipments or basic components that are used in the industrial automation, as well as uh, I will give you some brief about that particular products, like some controllers are there, some softwares are there. And then I will show you actual uh, panel of the automation systems as well as some of the components that I have right now available here so that I will share with all of you. So let's get started. First question uh, that will be on, in your mind. Uh, what is this automation? So in simple language, I can say to you uh, for the automation uh, that I can say uh, any process, any machine or anything that will done via automatically that we can say automation uh, so uh, basically in this automation as you can see one image on the screen uh, there are some robotic arms are there there is one operator on the computer screen as well as one this operator station there is also one operator and some this is one production line uh, they are manufacturing one product so this is the automated plant in which most of the processes are done via machines without less human intervention. So this is called a automation. So I, I will, I can give you the definition of automation like this. It is a set of technology and by using this set of technologies, 
uh, you will find your particular machine or particular process that will done uh, without uh, significant human intervention which means you will not require more manpower to do the process and the process will done automatically as well as the performance or you can say efficiency that will be higher as compared to your manual operation or normal uh, without automation based based operation so there are many advantages of the automation like for example if any manufacturing plants are there or automobile manufacturing plants are there in the industry so if they do a production via only manpower so they will have the longer time to produce produce particular product as well as there will be minor human error because as we are humans uh, we will do a uh, small small mistakes and as well as if uh, you work continuously uh, for 8 hours so there will be some minor errors like uh, you will not having accuracy in your final product so that error will be reduced via automated systems or automated machines in that uh, what will happen you will just have to set your set points which means i want to produce uh, this product at this at this particular temperature so you have to just write your set point and that machine will work automatically as per your commands so and via uh, using machines you can run your plant 24 by 7 so that will be the main advantage so in the automation sectors there are many different different areas like uh, as we are today discussing industrial automation which means all of the industries are going automated as well as there are other automation areas are there like building automation in which uh, like you are visiting many bigger malls or corporate offices where uh, you can find the automatic door open close uh, systems systems are there and then elevators are there automated uh, air condition systems are there so that are the part of the building automation as well as the home automations are there right like uh, we are operating our home appliances via our mobile phone so that are the part of the home automation today we are discussing about industrial automation how automation is done in the industry so what we are doing basically in this industrial automation so for that uh i have one definition here so all of the human control functions which means whatever processes you are doing via manpower without automation you can do via manual operation all of that operation that i will assign to the particular machines via one controller or any uh microprocessor or controllers and so what will be uh, done uh, after doing this so all of your main power based operation that will done via technical equipments so that will automated and your manual operation will be released or it will be decreased so by using this automation technologies we have uh, increasing in productivity which means you are operating via the machines so that machine can run 24 by 7 so the production will be increased as well as the quality will be increased or better how it will be increased or better because in this automation process you are uh, putting your set points or your desired output so what you have to do you have to just set the set points or parameters and according to your inputs that machine will work so your production will be as per your desired requirements uh, like uh, uh, i want to give you an example for this quality uh if you are using any food products or any beauty products in today that same product you are using before two or two or three years so the quality of that particular product will remain same as you are using that product before two years and that you are using that product right now so you cannot find any quality measures so that will be the part of industrial automation as well as we are doing the automation in the industries so there are many areas in the industries uh, that will be hazardous to humans so at that particular place we can put the robotic arms or automated machines so that will be uh, very safer to work in the industry for the humans so safety will be increased 
and the main advantage of uh, the automation that will be reducing manpower and per product costing so uh, how the per product costing will be reduced because our production will be higher in less time and the product will be as per our requirements so that will generate the revenue in the market so your per product cost will be decreased when you are going uh, your uh, via this automation systems so that we can uh, define via to this industrial automation now you can see the one uh, block diagram so via this block diagram we'll understand the whole automation system where uh, you have one process at the bottom side you will find the process block so any process uh, you can understand via this block diagram so i will uh, take here one temperature control process in the industry i have uh, one area where i want to control a temperature to for example 500 degrees celsius that is my process to maintain a temperature for 500 degrees celsius so to do this process what we will require so first of all we will require the sensors which will sense that particular temperature for that area so that we can say that is your measuring devices like temperature sensor rtd thermocouples that are the examples for the temperature sensors that temperature sensors will put into the field and that will give you the signal for of the temperature and that signal that will directly uh, connect towards our automated controller and in this automated controller what we have done uh, we have put some program as per our requirement which is having our desired set points like this is my process to maintain the temperature of 500 degrees celsius so that type of program that i have put in this automated controller so what is the working of this automated controller it will receive the temperature sensor signal like for example right now it is it is receiving 400 degrees celsius from the temperature sensor and my side point that is 500 degrees celsius so it will uh, your automated controller will find your process value which means that will receive via sensor it is less than your side point so what controller will do according to program it will give you the output signal and via this controller it will operate your heating elements which means heating devices so this automated controller will generate some signals to power up your heaters or exhaust fans or whatever heating devices are there to done this process to do this process that uh, devices will operate via this automated controller that we are saying final control device final control device means uh, your uh, in the process uh, via any uh, via any equipment or via any devices your process is done that we are saying final control device which means at the end that process control device like here we have the heaters uh, that will uh, produce the heat so that are our final control device like if you have the conveyor belt so that conveyor belt is operated via motor so that will be your final control device so your automated controller will give signal to the final control device and final control device is uh, do the process and now if our controller is given the heating command to the final control device so it will increase the temperature or it will increase the heat in the process and again your temperature sensor will give the signal to the controller and if it it is reached to the 500 degree celsius so it will maintain this process so as per the block diagram this process will uh, run in the continuous way like whatever uh, control signal is transferred by a controller uh, that will control your device and whatever effect is done in the process you will find via sensors so we are saying this a uh, feedback control system or closed loop control system so in any process uh, there are two types of control systems are there uh, first one that is open loop control system in which if you are applying any input towards the field uh, you will not find any feedback signal from that particular process or from from that particular field but in this closed loop control system 
you will find the feedback signal whatever input you are applied to the particular field or particular process so what is the effect of your input that you will receive in the form of the feedback so now you have the feedback of your input so you can compare your feedback as well as your input and if any error will be there so you can reduce that error so all the industries are working in this closed loop principle because uh, will require a feedback signal what is the effect of our, of our input in the process so all of the industries working on this closed loop control system so this is the explanation of the block diagram so you can easily understand any process via this block diagram here i have taken the example of temperature control system you can also take the pressure control system as well as the flow control system or level control systems so you can understand that particular process via this block diagram now next uh, i want to discuss regarding the evolution of the industry how industry uh, evolved from industry industrial revolutions to right now in the industry 4.0 so you can say that industrial revolution started in 1784 uh, that uh, i can say the first steam engine based operation uh, from that industry was started in that particular era of industry 1.0 uh, totally there is a mechanical power based operation which means uh, steam based operation weaving looms are there mechanical operations are there steam engines are there and from that industry Uh, developed day by day and uh, in 1870s second industrial revolutions are there in which bigger manufacturing plants assembly line based plants mass production uh, was started in industry 2.0 as well as there are uh, electrical energy are also there so electrical motors and all of the things is attached with this uh, second industrial revolutions then in 1969 uh the third revolutions uh, industry 3.3.0 uh, that will be the era uh, that is uh, that was the era of the automation era so from 1969 first plc was invented in this 1969 and then after the automation industrial automation uh, comes into the industry and right now uh, in the industry the industry 4.0 is that in which cyber physical systems are there internet of things which means industry is connecting to the internet and you will have the industrial environment or industrial data in your mobile phone in the, anywhere in the world which means industry or there are some smart sensors are there uh, which will connect to the internet and you have the particular sensors data in your mobile application as well as in the iot dashboards so that is the era of industry 4.0 is running right now in the industry So this is the evolution of industry from 1.0 to 4.0. Now uh, we'll discuss what are the different different components or equipments are used in the automation. Uh, here I will discuss the major components that are used in the industrial automation. So first, uh, in any system or any process, you will find the sensors because without sensor you cannot do any process. you will uh, you have the sensors so that will sense your input parameters or physical quantities like pressure level temperature flow so all of this uh, signals you will find via sensors and with the sensors will required the transmitters to transmit that particular raw signal into the electrical form uh, like i want to give you an example uh, we have the rtd temperature sensor so the rtd uh, is based on resistance temperature detector the full form of rtd that is resistance temperature detector so if you have the rtd sensor and uh, if you want to uh, check that particular temperature so for that purpose you will require a transmitter why because rtd is uh, that will give you the resistance change whenever temperature changes that rtd will give you the change in the resistance so that uh, resistance signal that cannot be understand by this uh, automated controller so for that purpose we have to connect a transmitter or transducer that will transmit or convert that particular resistance 
into equivalent electrical signals. So now which electrical signals are there? So in the industries, generally uh, we are using 4 to 20 milliampere signals or 0 to 10 volt signal. So these signals you can directly connect via your automated controller and that will do the process. So we'll require the transmitters also as well as after the sensors will require our control system like PLC that is our automated controller the full form of PLC that is programmable logic controller so I will show you the PLC in the later on uh, it is the automated controller that will do your automation process uh, you can say that PLC that is the heart of automation so it will interface uh, with the field instruments and you have your user program so that you have to transfer into the PLC and according to sensor signal and according to user program it will uh, operate the different different field equipments that you have interfaced with the PLC as well as the DCS is also uh, the another control system the full form of DCS that is distributed control system that is a higher version controllers of the PLC so that will be used in the bigger plants like thermal power plants uh, oil and gas plants big manufacturing plants in that bigger plants uh, where you have thousands of field instruments uh, so for that uh, bigger plants uh, we are using the DCS controllers now after the control system we have different different types of output devices which we want to control via our controllers so that are some actuators like some switching devices like relays contactors uh, VFDs, uh, variable frequency drive. So basically, uh, VFDs are used for speed control as well as torque control of the particular motor. So there are different different types of VFDs are also available. Um, like uh, for induction motor, we have the VFD for servo motor, for stepper motor. So there are different different types of VFDs are also available. So what is the working of the VFD? Uh, I want to uh, discuss regarding this VFD because this is a very important device uh, in the automation systems. So there are many speed control methods uh, of the motor or induction motor or three phase motor, single phase motor. But uh, uh, that is not efficient or not as per the requirement. Like I have the operation where I want to operate a conveyor belt for 100 RPM initially for five minutes and then I want to operate that conveyor belt uh, in the speed of 200 RPM. So that is not uh, achieved by the conventional speed control method as well as if you are achieved that particular process. So that is not efficient. So VFD is the device uh, which will give you the variable frequency like uh, the speed control equation of uh, the motor that is uh, and that is your speed of motor is equal to 120 F divided by P. That is your speed equation of the motor. So where uh, you have 120 that is constant number F that is your frequency and divided by P that is number of poles. So number of poles that will be uh, fixed like 2, 4, 6, set in the even numbers. And so you cannot change the number of poles if you want to change the, uh, the speed of the motor. So if you have the variable frequency so you can easily control your motor speed. So VFD is the device that will give you the variable frequency output. So you can connect your motor via VFD and you can have the speed control as well as well as torque control of your motor as per your requirements. Like uh, I want to give you a simple example of this VFD. All of you have uh, visited the or use the lifts or elevators that all of we have used. Uh, so when you enter into the lift and press the particular third floor button, you are right now at the ground floor and you are pressing the third floor button. So that lift started smoothly. Uh, so and then it will achieve its maximum speed. And whenever the third floor comes, that lift uh, stops smoothly. So that is the working of your VFD. For example, if you start any motor directly or just say uh, if in your home we have the fan and if you directly connect that fans to the power supply 
so that fan will operate uh, it maximum speed same way if you uh, operate any induction motor uh, directly via power supply you are applying 230 volt as well as uh, 440 volt directly to the motor so it will directly achieves its maximum speed but if Uh, I want to control the speed, which means in the lift, uh, the that lift started smoothly, which means from zero to maximum speed, uh, it will have the gradually increase. Then it will reduce the maximum speed, so it will move forward. And whenever your uh, destination arrives, so it will stop smoothly, which means again gradually decreasing the speed. So that is one operation of VFT. then uh, we have the different different control valves solenoid valves in the process uh, side as well as indicating lamps and all of the output devices which we want to control that are our uh, output devices then an operator station like hmi and scada so hmi that is a human machine interface uh, as well as the scada supervisory control and data acquisition system so hmi that is one hardware based device uh, that is used to uh, monitor and operate your particular machine for example i have one production machine and uh, that is producing some product and i want to check uh, how many products has been produced and what is running right now in that particular machine so that i can check or operate via this hmi as well as this scada scada that is a software based system uh, why using scada uh, you have your plant in your computer like in your pc you can easily monitor your plant in the computer screen uh, in the form of graphical representation i will uh, show you the scada as well as hmi also in later on uh, then uh, we will understand this as pure application because the plc dcs that are the controllers that will uh, control your process but if you want to monitor the whole process as well as you want to operate the whole process via your computer screen for that purpose you will require this scada as well as the hmi system so that are the operator station next uh, some of the field instruments uh, are here so you can understand uh, easily so these are the some uh, sensors like proximity sensors used for the object detection in the industry then the selector switch to select the operation mode in auto manual on off then push buttons are on the control panel so you can have the uh, uh, control of particular machine like on off start stop and all that then we have the temperature sensor rtd it will look like this then we have the relays uh, it will look like this it is a switching devices as well as the contactor is also the switching device then this is the solenoid valve and this is the level sensor uh, basically this is the float type level sensor uh, then the control valve so these are the some field instruments so you have the better idea of the field instruments so there uh, this are the very limited field instruments there are lots of field instruments uh, you can find in this in this lot of mission sector next as we are discussing our uh, input and output in this uh, automation webinar so uh, whatever are your sensors that we are saying that are the input devices and whatever your field instrument that you are going to operate via controller that we call the output devices so there are two types of input and output devices uh, first of all there is a digital input and output and analog input and output digital in in the digital input which means uh, it will having either on or off state which means there is only two states either zero either one that we are saying the digital and in the analog it will having the multiple states like uh, the current range of 4 to 20 milliampere of particular sensor as well as the voltage of 0 to 10 volts so these are the analog input and output devices so here i have listed some examples of digital input output as well as the analog input output so in the digital input devices either it will be work on the ac power source or either it will work on the dc power source and in this analog this will be the both uh, current and voltage in the form of dc power supply so in the digital input devices we have the push buttons selector switches limit switches level switches proximity sensors as per the application you can use that particular digital input devices then we have the digital output devices like on off valves relays lights 
buzzers, indicators. So all of these devices are the digital output devices, which means it will either turn on or turn off. It is having only two states. Then we have the analog input devices like level detector, then different different transmitters like pressure transmitter, temperature transmitter, level transmitters, R3D, temperature sensor, uh, flow sensor. So all of that devices are the analog input devices, which because it will give you the signal in the form of 4 to 20 milliampere, either 0 to 10 volt. Now the analog output devices like the variable frequency, the VFD, so you can operate the VFD via PLC also. So that is the analog output devices for the PLC or control wall. In the control wall, you can have the access to uh, control the particular wall position from zero to hundred percent. So the, this is the control wall. Uh, here it is. So in this control wall, uh, that is the mechanism of control wall is like that. Uh, you have the access to set the position of the wall inside this part. Like I want to open the 10% of the wall. So according to that liquid will flow. So in the flow control process, this control wall is used to control the flow of any liquid or chemicals. So it will be used generally in the process industries, which will uh, do the chemical processing. So this is the examples of input and output. So this will be interfaced uh, with the PLC as well as DCS and after your user program, uh, that process will be done. Now we'll discuss the main part, the programmable logic controller PLC. So it will look like this. You have one image of PLC programmable logic controller. So basically it is a solid state industrial computer with the modular components designed to automate your process as well as your customized plant. So as per your requirements, you can uh, make a program and interface the field instruments with the PLC and it will do the automation processes. So basically PLCs are often used in the factories as well as industrial plants to control different different output devices that we have discussed already like motor, pump, light, fan, circuit breakers and all other machinery. So why we require the PLC? So before PLC, uh, there are many problems in the hardware logic control. Now, what is the hardware logic control? So before PLC, all of the panels or control panels in the industry that are works on the electrical wiring that we are saying hardware logic, like a, a relay contactor based wiring are electrically logic are used in the control panel. So there are many problems in that particular hardware logic as well as that panel is having the bunch of wires. So that is very uh, time consuming to make any project or make any uh, process as well as it will be operation of that particular hardware panels that will be very bulky, noisy, as well as it will require more space and it will consume more power. And if any problem is there in that particular control panel, so to troubleshoot that panel, that will be very difficult and complex part as well as the project time will be longer and it is having the limited lifespan because any uh, relay contact or actuating device or switching device you will have. So that is having the its lifespan. So it is having limited lifespan. That's why we will require this programmable logic controller and this PLC is, was introduced in 1969 by D. Richard Dick Molly. So uh, how uh, they invented this PLC. So they want to reduce that particular hardware logic. So what uh, they have done in this first PLC, whatever your failed instruments, like push buttons, limit switches, label switches, that you have to wire up with this PLC. And whatever your output devices, like relays, contactors, all of that devices is connected or you have to wire up with this PLC. And the logic, which means uh, via this limit switch, I want to operate the relay number one, that is the pump relay. And via this uh, limit switch, I want to operate the pump number two. So that wiring logic that you have to make in the programming form, which means that is a program of your PLC. So they, uh, this Richard Dick Molly uh, reduce that particular wiring part via PLC and your particular logic that we can say that we have to make in the program form. So 
your operation will be very easy and it will not require more timing and more wiring so it is programmable reusable as well as reliable system and the plc that is the equipment that can withstand the harsh industrial environment and as well as it is having uh, the memory flash memory as well as the battery backup to store your data and easily starts and the programming of plc that will be very easy so that's why plc right now plc is most commonly used device in the industrial automation sector so we will see the architecture of plc what is the architecture of the plc so firstly uh, you will find four different different components in the plc systems like first of all you have the power supply unit then you have the input output module where you can interface your field instruments as well as the cpu central processing unit which will uh, save your program as well as your sensors data and there will be bus system uh, to transfer the data from input module to cpu with particular address uh, we have the bus system in this bus system we have two types of bus address bus as well as the data bus so address bus will carry the address as well as data bus will carry the data for the particular address so these are the four different uh, components that are used in the plc and all of the components are combined into the one part and that we can say the plc or programmable logic controller so what is the working of this plc for example i have some sensors connected with the plc i have some field output devices connected with the plc so how plc will work also i have transferred one program uh, as per my requirement into the plc so initially uh, you will have the uh, sensor signal that is transferred towards the PLC's input module and via that input module that were transferred towards CPU and from the CPU uh, that will execute your program as per the sensor signal and according to program if any process is operated via your sensor or sensor signal so that will execute it via CPU and then it, it will generate one output signal and that output signal transferred towards the output module and from that output model we have already interfaced our field output devices so that field output devices will operate as per the sensor signal as per the user program so there will be a scan cycle that we can say the working of plc uh, in the scan cycle there are three stages like input scan program scan and output scan in input scan uh, from the field, uh, you will have the sensor signal or field input signal towards the PLC's input module and that will transfer towards the CPU. After that, in the program scan, uh, that signal uh, is executed as per the program. And after that, we have the output scan. Whatever output is operated or generated via that particular signal, that will update it towards the output module and that will operate your output so this are uh, this uh, we can say plc's scan cycle and in any plc uh, the timing to complete this scan cycle is less than 2 milliseconds which means plc is very fast uh, in the execution of the program if uh, you are applying any input to the plc or, so that input uh, is executed within milliseconds and you will have your output as per the program so that is the scan cycle of the plc so according to this there are many advantages of the plc like operation is very reliable uh, there are many flex, uh, flexibility in control techniques reprogramming and reprogramming that will be very easy larger number of field instruments that you can connect with the plc as well as there are modi if you have the modifications in your program so that you can do easily as well as cost effective as compared to that hardware logic complex systems and the size of plc is very small uh, and if you want to simulate your process so that you can easily simulate uh, speed in operation that we have seen like scan time of that particular any plc is less than milliseconds and the main advantage of the plc is like it can have the communication with the computer systems very easily so if is any error or any problem in the plc so that error code you have in your computer so now you can easily troubleshoot that particular process or particular uh, problem 
and the maintenance and troubleshooting that is very less in the PLC part because there is a no moving part in the PLC. It is totally IC based uh, uh, operation in this PLC. So the lifespan or and the maintenance and troubleshooting in the PLC is very less. Next, as we are discussing, uh, you have to make a user program of the PLC. So there are there are many programming languages of the PLC. And in this programming languages, the first programming language of the PLC that is a ladder diagram. So it is based on simple electrical circuit or single line diagram. And you it will look like this. You have one ladder diagram example here. And the most commonly used programming language of the PLC that is ladder diagram in the India as well as in the out of India also. So, because it is very easy to make, easy to understand programming language of the PLC. Next programming language, that is our functional block diagram, FBD we can say. In this functional block diagram, you have the predefined function block for particular process. Like if you want to take any input, so you have the predefined function block. If you want to take any output, so it is having already predefined function block. So what you have to do, you have to put the function block in your programming software and connect that function block and there your program is ready for transferring into the PLC. Next programming language that is structured text ST. So it is a conditional statement type uh, programming language, which means it is having if else condition. If sensors, temperature sensors value is less than 100 degrees Celsius, then a motor is to turn on and if that uh, sensors value is not less than 100 then else motor number two will turn on so like this it is having conditional statement if your condition satisfies then your statement works and that condition is not satisfied then other statements work so based on this conditional statements you can make the programming of the plc it is the structured text programming language then instruction list programming language that is it is having predefined instruction like FBD in which you will have the predefined function block in this instruction list you have the predefined instruction for taking an input and output and all that like here you have one example LD percentage I 1.1 so LD that is the instruction to take an input in the program and percentage I 1.1 that is your addressing of particular inputs and then sequential function chart, SFC, that is the last programming language of the PLC. Uh, it is based on the normal flow chart. Like uh, you have one example here, like start the process, read any values. And if that value is as comparison with this, then yes. So then go further. If no, then return to the particular start point. So like that, uh, we have the flow chart. Same way. The sequential function chart is also the programming language of the PLC. But among all of this programming language, letter diagram is most commonly used programming language. And that I, I will show you the actual letter diagram of the PLC in the at the end of this webinar. Now, if we have made our program in the programming software, so now we require to transfer that program from our computer laptop to the PLC or to the ECS. So for that purpose, we'll require the communication protocol. So what is the communication protocol? Because we have the PLC that is a, another device as well as we have our laptop or computer that is another device. So I have two different, different devices and I want to transfer the program via my laptop towards the PLC. So for that, uh, I, I have to find that common medium between PLC and my computer or my laptop so they can communicate with each other. So that is the communication protocol. Basically, it is a set of rules and regulations to communicate between two or more devices. Like uh, one simple example I want to give to understand this protocol. Uh, if you are transferring some data from your laptop to the mobile, okay, because your mobile is also another system as well as laptop is also another hardware. And now you are transferring some data from laptop to mobile by using USB cable. So that is the communication protocol. So USB is understand via the mobile as well as the laptop. So both can understand the USB. So that is a common medium. So that data cable, that is your communication medium. 
and the protocol behind that particular USB uh, particular data cable that is a USB protocol universal serial bus. So that is having some rules and regulations like some uh, data transfer speed, uh, number of devices that you can connect. So that are some rules and regulations. So that is called a communication protocol. So in the industrial automation to communicate with the PLC, we have different different types of communication protocol like RS-232, RS-485, Data Highway Plus, Hard Protocol, Ethernet IP, Modbus, Profinet, TCP IPs. So all of that are the communication protocol examples. As per the PLC, you, you can choose the different different communication protocol. So that will require to communicate towards the PLC as well as PLC to PLC communication, PLC to SCADA, PLC to HMI. So for this communication purpose, uh, will require this communication protocol. Now, uh, this is uh, the SCADA system image that you can see on the screen. So uh, as you can see on the screen, it is having one uh, factory environment. And in this, uh, you can see this, or uh, the process is running. So whatever uh, your industry uh, or in the plant, there are many equipments are there. So in the SCADA system, you have the graphical representation of your plant. And via this graphical representation, you can monitor of uh, your, your all process as well as you can operate the process via this SCADA software. So the full form of SCADA is supervisory control and data acquisition. So which, which means that you can supervise your plant as well as you can control your plant as well as you can transfer some amount, amount of data via your SCADA to the PLC as well as PLC to the SCADA. So it is a purely software based system uh, that will communicate with your control hardware like PLC and DCS. And according to PLC's operation, it will update some values in the SCADA software and you will have the indications as well as the data in your SCADA software in the real time. So basically the SCADA software uh, is the uh, work in the synchronism with the control hardware like PLC as well as DCS for supervising, controlling and data acquisition process. So by using SCADA software, the operators, plant engineers, managers, supervisors, they can easily view and interact with the working of entire operation through the graphical representation of the production process or any plant. So SCADA constantly collecting data from the plant via PLC. So in real time, the SCADA stores and processes the, your data into the databases as well as evaluates and generates some alarms or display information to particular plant operators as well as the supervisors as well as the managers so can so they can easily operate that particular process. So it is a very useful software because uh, if you have the PLC and all that system that will run, that is running right now. Now if you, you want to check the process what is running right now. So you, you have to go to the field and check the process. So it will be very complex if you have the larger plant or bigger plant. So for that purpose, we have the SCADA software and via the SCADA software, we can easily uh, monitor and operate our process. So the SCADA software in the industry, it will look like this. And generally it is using in the bigger plants like production plants, power generation, transmission, distribution, building automation, water treatment lines, as well as material handling plants, uh, automated assembly lines plants. So all of this, uh, as well as chemical processing plants. So all of this plant is having the SCADA software. So via this computer screen, you can easily uh, operate your process, process. Then we have the HMI, human machine interface. So the HMI system is the basically hardware based system and via this uh, HMI you can easily interact with your particular machine like I have the standalone machine and I want to give some parameters to that particular machine and I want to change some timing of that particular machine or I want to on off that particular process. So for that we are using HMI human machine interface basically it will fit on the control panel. So if you have uh, checked, uh, if you have seen somewhere uh, in the industrial visits as well as on the uh, TVs or uh, some on the internet. So this HMI is fitted on the control panels outer side door 
and this HMI is communicating with the PLC. So it will give the signal of human to the PLC because PLC that is a hardware based device and it will work on your user program and according to sensor signals. Now if I want to change some parameters, so for that purpose, uh, I have to interact with that particular PLC's programming. So for easier operation, we have this HMI systems. So from the HMI systems, you can easily uh, transfer some parameters or easily change some parameters of that particular standalone machines. So at the end, your process will control via the PLC and to uh, change some parameters like uh, uh, I will give you one example to understand its HMI. All of us uh, is has visited the bank ATMs. Okay, so on your bank ATM screen, you are assigning some inputs or giving some inputs, and according to that, that particular machine will work. Same way in the industry, uh, there are having many machines, and to operate that machines, that will require some human inputs. So for that purpose, we are using the HMI, and you can say HMI that is a small subset of the SCADA because uh, you can operate your process via HMI as well as the SCADA. But SCADA that is a software based system and HMI that is a hardware based system. So SCADA is having the vast area. So it will be used in the bigger plants where it is having the uh, thousands of failed instruments and having the multiple PLCs. So a single SCADA can connect with the multiple PLCs. So that will be used in the bigger industrial plants. So HMI is used for the particular standalone machine process. And both this card and HMI that we can say that is the operator station. And via that operator, operator station, you can easily interact with your processes. So that is the main difference between SCADA and HMI. Now uh, I want to show you the actual PLC panel as well as the HMI and some P other PLCs also I have right now with me. So just wait, I will start the camera and show you the actual PLC panel. So right now I have this panel with me and it is having this PLC. So this is the actual industrial panel and in which uh, your power supply initially that will connect with this uh, MCBs and from the MCBs uh, these are the some bus bars to transfer uh, DC power source as well as the AC power source in the whole control panel and this uh, gray blocks are the terminal blocks to connect your field instruments with this PLC. And this orange one, this is the SMPS switch mode power supply. Uh, that is uh, uh, the operation of this SMPS is to convert AC power source into the 24 volt DC. And this is our actual PLC, the image that you have seen in this uh, presentation, that is the image of this uh, PLC. And this is the Rockwell automation based Allen Bradley Micrologics 1400 series of PLC. Uh, it is having the communication protocol of this Ethernet IP uh, that uh, right now I have connected with my laptop and as well as some push buttons and some lamps that I have connected with this uh, PLC's input and outputs as well as this is the some external relays uh, like this black and gray color. So this is the external relays and this is one contactor for switching purpose and now I will show you some another PLC also. So this is the another PLC of Allen Bradley named the Compact Logic series. So it will be used for controlling more than uh, 2000 failed instruments. So it is very small and compact and if you want to expand the uh, field instrument capacity with this PLC so you can easily expand your field instrument capacity via this expansion port as well as I have one HMI uh, with me. So actually it is look like this. This is the Allen Bradley panel view 1000 HMI. So it is having the very big screen, touch base screen. Like here, I want to change some parameter or I want to change my side point. So what I have to do just, I have to 
change the set point like right now it is 1.0 and i want 1.7 i want to change it to 1 so i can easily change it to 1 and according to this now the process will done so uh, this is the hmi uh, this will be used for the particular machines so you can have the different different areas uh, in this hmi so according to this you can easily have the access to the particular machine and you can uh, operate the process as well as change some parameters in the process so this is the actual hmi uh, right now it is the individual one because but it will be fitted uh, fitted on the particular panel and now i will show you the actual scada how it is look like so here I have one SCADA, the image in the presentation that I have show you. It is the image of one demo plant of one uh, manufacturing process of the cold rings. So in this plant, you have your whole process area. And uh, for example, this is the mixing area. This is the filling area. This is the labeling area as well as this is the packaging area. So you can easily uh, check all of the process is running right now. Like uh, mixing processing running, filling process is running, blending process is running, labeling process is running. And you have the current status of your plant right now here on the right side top, total rejected items, total good items, as well as which product you are producing right now. So all of the overview of the plant you have here. And if you want to check individual process, so uh, if I want to check this filling process, so what I have to do, I have to just click on that particular filling process and I can see this filling process right now here. So it is showing that filler status that is running right now, as well as uh, total production count, as well as which product is uh, manufacturing. So all of the uh, data of your plant you have in this small uh, this software uh, named as SCADA. So basically this is the Rockwell Automation SCADA. The software name that is a Factory Talk View Studio. Now I want to check uh, this uh, labeling operation. So just I have jumped onto the labeling operation. And if I want to start stop this process, so I have the access to start the process as well as to stop the process. And uh, in the all of the alarms, because in any process you have the alarms uh, generated in uh, running condition. So that alarms you will find on the top area. So from that you have the idea of your plant, uh, whatever process is running or if any critical alarms are there. So you have the troubleshooting uh, done very easily as well as we have the packaging area here. So it will package the softwares for particular products. So all of the things that you can do easily via your SCADA software system. Like right now it is uh, running some processes. And if I want to change some process, or if I want to add something so that I can uh, done easily like this. So via this SCADA software, you can easily operate your plant, monitor your plant. So that will be very useful when we are working with very large industrial process and large industrial plants. So this is the actual SCADA software. Now I will show you the letter diagram programming of the PLC. So for the particular PLCs, there are some uh, programming softwares are there. So in that particular programming software, you can make your programming as per your requirement. So this is the actual letter diagram of the PLC. Like uh, this is one program to operate a motor in forward and reverse condition. So initially you have to start the process or start the motor and according to your uh, signal or according to your selection the motor will run into the forward as well as reverse section so like this uh, you have you can also make this letter diagram there are some basic rules and regulations to understand 
to make a programming as per your requirement and uh, you have so you can understand this very easily like uh, this is in this flooded diagram uh, this is the bus bars uh, like this two vertical line uh, first one is in left side and then the right side that are the bus bars and some horizontal lines that are the rungs like uh, rung number 0 rung number 1 rung number 2 so this uh, we can say this is the ladder diagram structure and in the ladder diagram we'll find this inputs like start motor stop motor so this inputs are on the panel in the form of push buttons so when you press some push buttons so according to that uh, this will works like uh, right now i have connected the software with the plc that i have shown you in the panel and uh, when i will show you via this camera yes so this is my start switch and this is my stop switch so when i press the start switch as you can see on the software also and it will affect uh, on the lamp also so according to my input uh, this will uh, lamp is turned on and when i press the forward indication so this the relay number 1 is right now turned on which means that is a forward relay according and the this is the control wiring only in this panel power wiring uh, you have to uh, do for operating the particular pump or particular motor in forward reverse condition now i am pressing the reverse button or reverse indication so you can see the another relay is operated so according to that i can operate the particular machine or particular motor as per my requirement and the programming of this plc is very easy as well as this scada development or the hmi development is very easy because all of these things or all of the libraries that you will find in this uh, development software of the scada as well as the hmi development software what you have to do is you have to uh, put all of the things as per your process and configure it and you go to go so the configuration design and development of this automation components like plc scada hmi drivers that will be very easy that what you have to do you have to just go into the particular uh, standard operating procedure and then uh, all of the process that will be automated via this all of the components so that is the from my side and that is uh, the overview of the automation systems that i have given to you now if uh, some uh, question answer session i have uh, given but like the, this is the webinar so yes sir, we are going live and uh, yeah you would be able to see some questions if at all the students have in the comment section and you can reply there uh, thank you i would like to thank mr mitesh sir on behalf of electrical department thank you so much yeah thank you so much for sharing your valuable knowledge and time with us thank you so much ma'am for having me on this webinar series thank you Okay, sir. We are done. Uh, should we leave now? Okay. Yeah.